Austin Garden. Just in time, coming guys. Um, it's a pleasure to have you guys come over. This is my newly renovated home and I'd love to give you a tour. So right now we're in the kitchen and this is probably one of my favorite parts to work on. I think every home needs to have a pretty good kitchen and I'm all about details and textures. So what I wanted to try and create here was firstly something a whole lot more open. Before it was closed off, there was a wall here and a door here and you probably had about three steps to work with in the vicinity of the kitchen and it wasn't really practical for anything you wanted to do in the kitchen. So I first then just sort of got rid of the wooden countertops uh, that were that all vinyl material, put in these granite uh, matte and leathered counters with a bit of the glossy texture on the sides, um, put in some Italian Terrazza inspired tiling as opposed to your traditional metro tiling, went for a slightly more rustic industrial feel. Wanted to keep as much of the older elements as possible. We've got the old um, window over here, which I just recessed and cladded it in the dark stained wood, which is what the cabinets are made up of all around here. Then together with Studio 19, who I entrusted with to help me with this design project, we created these copper and uh, bronze mottled shelves to give the kitchen a bit more of a um, luxurious element or luxurious feel um, with the metallics and then also use the dark stained wood that's on the cabinets as a counter, it's a ceiling feature, um, splashback to sort of break it up between the Toretta tiles and um, the wood and just sort of warms up from here on onwards. <laughs> So one of the things I also want to be able to create in the home was spaces that felt completely separated from one another where it was quite distinct, but more specifically, um, you know, a easy to live in practical kitchen, a bar, um, a breakfast table, eating area, as well as a lounge that doubled up as quite a comfortable cinema too, but we'll get onto that a little bit later. This is the bar section and the table is a little bit higher than usual. It's not at a comfortable eating point, um, so it's very awkward there. That's because I wanted it to be very clearly just for drinking. So have friends over, you have a great social element of being able to just have them sit while you cook or do whatever you're doing in the kitchen and um, they'll just sort of drink and you can um, entertain them from here or they can be doing that around the rest of the home. But that's why I love the bar, you know, the bar is just something that really separated and is a very distinctive, um, you know, entertaining part of the home. And every bar needs to, in my opinion, have a bit of a statement piece. And that's why I have these concertina lights, which I got from Wayland. And these are just a, a really great quirky feature um, that I think make the design in this space just that little bit cooler. They held up right now so that you don't play with them up and down as if they were um, some sort of accordion because then you just might rip the ceiling down. There used to be a wall here with a small door that you would walk through into the corridor. Um, but once realizing that I wanted a, uh, the bar that I wanted to have here, knocked down that wall and created a drinks cabinet and made some very practical usage of the drinks cabinet. Um, there's some prep trays for you to be able to, you know, make your drinks for um, whether you have people there at the bar or here by the breakfast table. But of course, also, what is a bar without some drinks? Breakfast table. This was a, a table I had gotten from La Forma. If you look at the legs, it's something that I thought was quite nice and unique. But I wasn't a fan of the original table top because I think it just needed a little bit more. And I found this uh, great marble place. Um, well, Studio 19 found this great marble place and they knew that I was looking for uh, green marble. One of my favorite colors, especially in interior space, is uh, olive green. And so this had green, pearl, and um, tan in it. And so we decided that it would be the perfect match, especially picking up the browns from the bar stool and the tan on the couch. And I think it just complements the space completely. And then what we ended up doing also was putting a block over this counter just to show that there's some sort of a, a flow running through. I'm a big art fan. And 
that's why I have sort of all this art around here, but it's only a little bit of the collection that I've been trying to um, build. It's all African art. In fact, more specifically, all the art you're looking at right now is South African art. And I decided to have it all placed on biblio shelves so that you could just place the artwork, but also be able to move it around the space so that there was some sort of a flow. And that it didn't mean because you put up the artwork, it was something that had to be fixed and was a fixture that wasn't going to be moved around often. I like a bit of dynamism in my space moods and seasons change and you want to be able to move that around and rotate your art and that's why I think it works so well that I can just place my art and then decide to move it if I want to. And just to sort of speak more specifically to who the artists are, um, that piece over there is actually a diptych by Banela Koza. Um, he's a, an amazing young South African artist who I've been really trying to track the journey of for a while and he just keeps going from strength to strength. The same can be said for Giggs Khole, who is another great um, young South African artist. He's currently doing his residency in the French Riviera um, and he's making some big waves there. And then a lady here, Lebohang Mutaung, who makes all of her art out of hair. And just like my home, my art needed to be something that made you want to take a closer look, was filled with different textures, made you sort of gasp at it in a very ooh and ah kind of um, way of wonderment. And you just really wanted to see a little bit closer as to what was really happening and considered the amount of thought that was taken into it. And I think as a detail oriented person, um, that's what I love about aspects of art where you consider people's labor and consider people's thoughts and stories behind things and um, what more it could really mean if you just peel away the layers. And now we're in the living room. This is um, a space I try and spend a bit of time in. I don't get to spend enough time in. Uh, usually I get home quite late and I am either in my bedroom or I'm at the table working. And I very seldomly get a chance to just sit and watch TV. But when I do, I make sure I do it in a big way, as you can see. So got a nice big TV and wanted to create a bit of a cinematic feel. Um, so I made sure that I had um, this couch, which is really, really comfortable. And of course, the big screen to go with it and some pleated curtains, which I'll close for you a little bit later. It comes with a little bit of a nifty trick. And um, TV units are always something that are a bit inconvenient to walk through when you are, you know, sort of trying to get past them in a, in a living room. And with such little space, you want to make the most use of the space. So I went for height instead of depth with these TV units. And they're very sort of slimline, long TV units as opposed to deep ones. And it's quite flush with the wall. It allows you to move freely and it doesn't inconvenience your movement to the outside, which is where we're off to next. So this was actually the first thing that I had done in the renovation. There was a massive wall here with windows and a little door that you'd walk through to get to the veranda. So it was really important for me to have these stacking doors that I could open up all the way and would therefore open up the entire space for me and allow the outside to come in and that free flowing environment that I guess this makes everything feel a whole lot bigger. On any given day, I come back home and I can just relax, especially during the summer, open it all up, enjoy the fresh breeze or air that comes through. Um, in the summer, actually, this is quite heavily leaved up um, and it feels like you're living in a tree house. But in the winter, as soon as all the leaves have fallen and you obviously have nothing left on the branches, there's a great view that allows you to see right through them. And it gives a completely different dynamic of living in this space and especially hanging out over here. But it still has its, um, still has its charm. And it's probably the thing I enjoy the most about spending some time here. But remember I said that there's a trick I wanted to show you about this particular space. And that was that cinematic feel I was trying to create. So each cinema has a comfortable couch or chair to sit in, as well as a big screen. But also it has the pleated curtain. But what makes these ones special is the illusion of having the outside in, but mainly the illusion of being a solid curtain. However, this one you can walk through at 
any point and it's like a little quirky thing that I kind of enjoy which makes it quite nice and ethereal but even more so if you need to block out the light just give it a bit of a twist and you've got your pleated cinema curtains switch off the lights and watch your movie so whenever I experience a bit of viewing pleasure it has to be done like that and it allows me to get the most of my home but truth is that it's freezing right now so I'm gonna close this and this is the bedroom um, in this particular room I went for that sort of New York apartment feel strip down the, the wall so strip the plaster and decided to go for that exposed brick have a great view outside there of just some awesome greenery and it kind of feels once again like you are you know maybe next to central park somewhere and gives you that pastoral bliss that you look for when you wake up in the morning um, small little details have linen covered cupboards um, wardrobes just to you know give that a little bit of texture once again have a floating bookshelf over there um, which has a matching sideboard uh, both from La Forma once again going for that uh, very earthy textures and tones and materials um, to sort of keep it all grounded as much as possible have some art I love my art in in my in my space and um, that art piece there is one by a guy called Chris Valentine and he's a really really good local artist and that was supposed to be a depiction of the state of my mind whenever I'm just doing my daily grind living in the big smoke in fact we called it big smoke and how I'm thinking a thousand thoughts at a moment and even when my mind is exploding and in overdrive that expression on that face is cool calm and collected because that's the only way I deal with everything as things get more hectic I get a whole lot calmer and cooler um, that's a photograph from a friend of mine called uh, Tabiso or Arrow a really really good um, local photographer too and I just love that piece just because um, the boy speaks to me you know I think it's a depiction of his innocence until he gets tainted by society hence his hands being all sort of blue and gloomy and because I have a great love for reading and I always make sure I need to get some pages in before I go to bed Studio 19 created this beautiful reading lamp for me and it's probably the last thing that goes on and off before I head to bed and then this used to all be one wardrobe and decided to knock that down and create an ensuite and there wasn't much space to to work with and we wanted to create something that felt like it could easily house um, a young couple you know so if I have that special lady in my life something that we could both exist in so I went for that double vanity sort of spacing of the basins um, a shower I, I like a good bath but I don't see the need in having um, a bath especially in an apartment obviously things like water usage and the fact that I'm never at home it's a lot more practical for me to have a shower and just be in and out makes my life a whole lot easier and it's just a space for me that I think is just easy to use and I have everything that I need and I think all the detail that is needed is um, paid attention to but one thing quite distinctive in this room is that it's got that slightly more African kind of lodge theme going on um, I love this pattern texture um, and design this is actually from uh, Boylance as well and it was originally a sideboard for a lounge that we instead decided to open up and use as a double vanity and it makes so much sense in this space detailed lamps over here or lights from Studio 19 as well and these wonderful long mirrors um, from La Forma 2 and in this space also decided to go for that light wooden oak um, kind of material uh, just to balance out the black tiling around here the black metro tiling and I think it's just something that creates a, a really good mood and a sense of neutrality that feels like it all comes together quite nicely so a bit of a confession I have a problem in fact I think I may have a few problems I've got a lot of things and part of those things is hats I own a lot of hats and this isn't even all of them most of them Simon and Mary 
I think um, Simon Mary is just an incredible milliner brand. Um, Dean is someone who I admire for the work that he's done with hats and if you know me I've usually got a hat or a cap on and my hair is perfectly fine by the way it's not a case of my hairline being you know, pushed back as far as a Rihanna album or something. So that is the problem and I needed to create a space for the problem to happily exist hence why there's a hat wall and a walk-in closet. I needed to have my own walk-in closet so that it was a place where I could be able to see all my clothes around me um, to visually have a home for each and every one of them and so uh, we built in this entire walk-in closet that allows me to just hang each thing up um, and I have all my suits across there, a few of my white shirts, um, bags and tops and my pants here, I always know what's missing. I try my best to keep some sort of color coordination. Um, now and again it does get mixed up, but I know usually, you know, darker on top and lighter on the bottom. And I love this space because it allows me to sort of come in um, in a very sort of black canvas kind of manner, see everything before I'm about to change and pick one or two items and build up from there. I'm not a person who pre-prepares all their outfits and has it all laid out the day before. I usually only decide when I step out the shower and come and have a look. So it's cool to be able to see it all and go from there. I would like to say that this is all of my stuff, but it's not. That's probably half if not a quarter but I'm working on it. It's definitely made me be a lot more conscious of the space that I take up with my clothes. And, you know, while I have these options, these are the ones I think I like to rotate the most. And then some wallpaper once again to add a bit of a luxurious cocooning feel to the walk-in closet. And then a mirror so that you have one more look at what you've worn before you leave. And that's why I think it's important to put as much of your heart into a space that you'll be living in. So that's it. Thank you so much for coming to my home. I hope you liked it. And I hope you get out and get that August issue, which is on shelves now. Cheers.